Is that the crafting stuff, Jan? Mm-hmm. This is everything you need to make this adorable. Except for straight pins, we're going to attempt this without straight pins. Yeah, we're going to attempt this. We're going to freehand it. This is everything you need that comes in the kit uh, to make this adorable little owl, like, electronic case for your iPods and your MP3, player. MP3 players and all that jazz. I mean, we're going to see. We're going to test and see what actually can get in that. Yeah, we're going to test. We don't have an iPod, so, yeah. yeah. But you got an MP3 player. Yeah, I got an MP3 player and other stuff. So we'll see what happens. So I'm going to now follow the instructions. You're going to follow instructions? This is the coolest day ever. <laughs> you know what? I may not follow instructions. I um, may just wing it. That's probably not going to help others out there, though. Let's see. The first thing we need to do is... Okay, this is also good. This kit, I don't know if you can see it, but for anybody who does not know how to sew at all, this kit gives a sample of different types of stitches. So when they say later on in the instructions, whip stitch, button stitch, this tells you exactly what that means and how to accomplish that certain type of stitch. So that's kind of cute. I like that they do that. It's like a little sewing lesson. Okay, that thing right there. And sew it to the back of this thing. I assume that this holds the headphones, perhaps? I don't really know. But the stitches match up, so I'm going to sew it back here. I'm winging it. I think I'm following the directions properly. This is obviously the front of the unit, and they want this on the back of the unit. I'm assuming because Well, that makes sense, sewing headphones. that first, because you want to do it before the pocket. So, I'm taking the green thread right here. It comes with a really handy needle threader, which I think is a cute thing for little girls and visually impaired big girls who don't know how to thread needles properly. It's totally threaded now. Um, they say that when you sew this, you should do a running stitch. And a running stitch is basically sewing up and down like this. So I'm going to do that. They kind of give you holes to follow. So if you are mindful of where you sew, you can kind of keep this in time without straight pins. So I'm just going to... Yeah, straight pins are just to make your life a little easier, but you... I haven't sewed in years. You're doing good. I think it was 8th grade the last time. I'm doing big, like, first grader stitches. But yeah, that's but that's the style anyway. It's like, you're supposed to do kind of chunky, kind of cute, you know. Yeah. And then you might notice that the felt gets, like, a little gathery every so often. So you just... You know, you're mindful and you just kind of pull it out a little bit to, to make it straight. Yeah, because that's why they tell you to use the pins, to keep it together, to keep yeah. it straight, so that you don't have to. Oops. But if you're kind of lazy or you don't feel like dealing with push pins. Exactly. Like oh, straight pins, I mean. We like to live dangerously. We like to live on the fly. Okay. Okay, so this is what I've gotten so far. And this makes a nice little pocket, I guess, for your headphones or maybe memory card, possibly. I don't know. I would say headphones. Yeah, because memory card would probably get lost in there. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Okay. So, and it's pretty deep pocket, you know, not that it could fit a lot, but it goes in there pretty, pretty deep. So that's what we got so far. Now we're learning how to tie off the knots because on this side we have two stringy dings hanging there. And I can't imagine that's right. It ain't. On this back side here, I just have to tie off finish knots on both sides. Next thing that I have to do is take these green and blue, so if I said that backwards, these green and blue circles like this, and tie this onto the flap. And this would make the owl's eyes. You mean sew them onto the flap? Yeah, sew them onto the flap. I'm sorry. I said glue. And I'm supposed to use the orange thread. I'm also going to research what an applique stitch is real quick. I'm going to refer to the beginning of the thing. Applique stitch is somewhat similar to a whip stitch. There's little dots that show where the eyes should be. So what you're going to do is take the blue one first. And you're going to line it up, and then you're going to, instead of sewing like around in a circle, in a straight line, you're going to kind of do like little pinwheels, sew in a pinwheel motion. That's what the stitches around should look like. Beautiful. So I'm going to cut this and tie it off, and then I'm going to...
start again on the next part of the eye. I'm going to sew on this other part of the eye. Same way with the same type of stitches. Okay, you guys, so I got both eye sockets and irises on, I guess. And uh, so now I just have to sew the little buttons on. I'm gonna go check the instructions to see exactly how to do that. And so I'll be right back when I figure it out. Okay. These are the two little eye pieces. They go on top of the irises that I already sewed. So what you wanna do is you just do a very simple stitch. You go up through one hole and down through the other hole, and then you tie a knot at the back. So I'm gonna put those on right now. Let me just see, make sure I'm doing this the right way. You want to place the button like so in the center of the eye like this. Then you want to go up like so. You might have a little trouble getting the pin head through, but just work it through. It'll happen. And then you want to go down again. Try to get it lined up as best as you can with the two, you know, circles or the two little dots because you don't want your owl to be cross-eyed because that just isn't a good look. Oh, it could be a unique look. Well, that is true. You against your own cross eyes? Well, sometimes I am. Well, I did my best, but he came out cross-eyed anyway. Aw, but he's sweet. You could say he's cross-eyed or you could say he's looking up and to the left. <laughs> He's adorable. So, you did good. Now I'm going to go to the rest of this and see what the instructions say next. Okay. I'm going to take this little teal colored triangle and I'm going to glue it onto. You mean sew it on? Sew it onto. I always say glue. I'm going to sew it onto him. And they want us to use an X stitch, which is basically just making a letter X with the stitch. So stitching once and then stitching over it. And I'm going to do that right now. This is the finished face. Let's see what the instructions say next. They say you do good work, Jim Moran. Okay. The next thing we have to do is take this lime green part and we have to sew the owl's wings on. You got it? Yep. This is going to be the front of the case. So we just sew the wings on like so. What kind of stitch are we using, Jen? I will let you know. It's a running stitch like we used to sew on the back pocket. And we're supposed to use the lime green floss. Okay. So I have the little owl's wings on. When you do the wings, make sure that the Velcro piece is the part that you put the wings on because that's what this part is going to be connecting to. And there's a little Velcro piece up here. Okay, got it. So you want to make sure that when you put the wings on, it fits the right way. If you put the wings on the wrong side, it's not going to close tightly and protect your gadget. I'm going to read the instructions and see what's next. Okay, these little flowers are supposed to be placed in this area randomly, just however you want them. They give you six, but they only show three, so I guess you have extras. I thought you only counted five. Oh, sorry. They, they give you five, but they only show three in this little area, so I guess they have the extra ones in case you want to put one up here or on the back, perhaps or you know wherever you want to put it so I'm just gonna affix the three with an X stitch using the uh, orange floss there you go. Okay. as you can see I finished uh, applying the little flower sequence on the middle and now the next and last step is to take both of the pieces and put them together like this and I'm gonna take the blue floss and I'm going to be doing a whip stitch all the way around and then it will be complete. What you want to do is just instead of going up and down through you want to go around the edge. This is a little more complicated at times because you have to make sure that everything lines up and nothing turns into a knot <laughs> but there you go and it creates a stitch that looks like this.
What's that in your hand? Okay, this is something that I just did not notice before, but these are instructions on how to do a, what's it called? Start knot. A start knot and an ending knot. And a finish knot. And a finishing knot. So that when you sew, your your beginning stitch and your end stitch will be nice and neat, <coughs> unlike what I did, but that's okay. But at least the instructions are there. Yeah, they very detailed instructions. So this is the, this is the owl. And this is what That's I'm your doing. owl, Jen. You did great. I did great. And you got like a, a, a cord coming out. You fantastic. Oh. <laughs> this is my owl. I think it looks pretty good. Oh, I think he looks cute. So this is my finished project. Little owl. A few examples of what can be in this. The first thing, which was a big surprise, was my flip. Because as you can see, it's pretty thick but it fits in here really nicely. The next thing that fits in here, oops, sorry. The next thing that fits in here is this smartphone. It's a Nokia, I don't know what kind it is. Um, this fits in here rather well, but it's a little tall so the, the Owl doesn't close 100% all the way, but it gets the job done. The last thing is this little Creative Zen, Creative Zen um, mini, you know, MP3 player. This is a lot smaller than the, the thing, so if you close it right here, there's going to be some room here for the thing to slide around a little bit. What I would suggest is maybe just bringing it all the way down and even though there's no velcro here because everything is felt it kind of still stays so you can even hold something smaller if you want to all in all I think that this is a really cute craft kit I think it's good for anybody who's I'd say maybe 11 10 or 11 years old and up maybe 8 or 9 if they have help um, I think that it produced a very functional little kit and uh, it was fairly easy to make. It has really, really good instructions. Oh, it has so detailed instructions. I mean, the instructions are great. I found that it had plenty of thread. I was a little worried at times that I might run out of thread. But there's yeah, plenty let's of see. Thread yep. There's the thread that's left over. Yep. So, that's it. Ta-da! Every craft week, we give away the project that we worked on. So if you're interested in winning this, you can check the bottom bar for a link to our website, yamyams.com, where there'll be a application for Rafflecopter, and that will give you all the different ways that you can enter to win this little owl technology case. So if you're interested, you can check the links below. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and also subscribe for more craft projects. Remember, every Wednesday on this channel is Craft Wednesday, and we'll be doing a brand new craft project.